Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 video. In this video, I'm going to be trying to answer one of the most common questions that comes up in the other MK videos that I've done. Uh, maybe aside from how to anti-air, which don't worry, I'll be getting to. Uh, but two of the other things that people really seem to be struggling, especially new players, is how to win against someone who is spamming pokes and how to win against someone who is constantly throwing you. Both of, the, both of these questions, again, can be unfamiliar concepts, even to people who only played MKX and Injustice 2, because uh, throw games weren't this strong in those games either. However, for people who might be coming from like Street Fighter or something, where throws are extremely strong and very viable, uh, this might be something that's more familiar to you guys. However, let's get to the first question, poking. MK11 is an extremely poke heavy game. Down pokes, down threes, down fours, all of these moves are very effective and are used by crazy ass online players. Seriously, people online love to down one, down three, do all sorts of crazy poking and it can be difficult to get out of. First of all, we have to establish disclaimer, online has lag, there's a couple of frames of delay, uh, not all connections are the same, so if you're trying these tactics and they're not working, keep in mind that, you know, online is not exactly 100% comparable to training mode. So, how do you counter poking? Well, every tactic has a way around it. Let's go over some of the most common ones. Oh, important, how do you set this up? So if you want to practice how to counter something like throwing, command throws, and the likes, the easiest way to set it up in the AI options is to set block mode to all, and then go to record with your dummy. The reason is, if you do this, now Baraka, or whoever your character is, quote unquote, is going to be blocking as well, allowing you to set up Situations like this. One of the most common things you see online. The down one into throw. Again, very, very common tactic and perfectly viable. You know, this type of low po Okay, actually, that's hella slow. So let's, you know, let's speed it up a little bit here. Uh, again, this is completely viable. You are okay to do this. Like, it's perfectly fine to do this a couple of times in the match to catch your opponent off guard. Really, the best players are gonna get caught off by this sometimes. However, if your opponent is overusing it, well, there are some very easy counters to it. One thing you have to understand is that no down one in the game, even some of the ones that are plus on block, which there are some, uh, give you enough frame advantage to get a guaranteed throw. The other thing you have to consider is that for throws to work, standard throws, your opponent always has to be standing. So how do you counter this type of tactic? Very easy. Your 1-1 one, one string. Your 1-1 one, one string is always guaranteed to work in a situation like this. They are fast, easily baiting out uh, any throw, and again, all down ones are minus or zero or maybe at max plus one. I think Kotal might have a plus down one. But even then, there is no like frame advantage, at least not one that guarantees a throw. So check out your character's 1-1 one, one string, which again, if you're any character, your 1-1 one, one string is pretty important or, you know, 1-2 or whatever, anything that starts with one and practice some combos that go off of your... Uh, 1-1 one, one string. Even if you're not playing a character like Baraka who can get massive combos off of moves like this, all characters can at least get like 20-23% damage and believe me, that type of damage is most of the times gonna stop your opponent from doing stuff like that. Now, the second situation we have to set up is people who are spamming down pokes. See, the same tactic, why is he doing... Uh, what the hell? Why is he only doing one? That's really weird. Okay, let me just properly do this. 
So again, this type of tactic can be frustrating to deal with. You are getting pushed out of range. It seems like there's no way that you can counter poke. And again, with a little bit of lag, it can be a problem. Now, Giris is a good example to use because he has a fairly quick uh, down one. My down one Barakas is seven frames on startup. Giris is a six. So as you can see, if I'm off by even a tiny fraction of a second, uh, he can beat me out. With down three, it's slightly easier because I think Baraka's down three is faster. Oh, it's seven frames. It's still seven frames, but anyways. Yeah, as you can see, there are situations where it doesn't work. However, there are two things you have to understand. First of all, it is okay to eat a couple of pokes. Like This amount of damage is not going to be the thing that ends the round for you most of the times. Of course, law on health, anything is possible. But if in the middle of the match you take a couple of down pokes, it is not the end of the world. Really, you should be watching out more for the opponent going for something like a throw after it. Like maybe he hits a couple of down pokes and goes into a throw. That's why I emphasized how to counter throwing first, because uh, the throw deals 14% damage. Getting hit by that is a lot worse than getting hit by three of these. So one thing I would recommend is always look out for the throw, because believe me, people who do stuff like that, they are going for a throw. The other thing is not to panic. What people tend to do is, when they're getting hit by low pokes, is they kind of panic and they try to backdash or try to walk away. That is not gonna work because pokes are so fast, you are going to be hit as you are trying to back out. Even worse, if your opponent does a poke into a 1-1 one -one string, you are likely to get hit by it and eat a full combo. So what do you do? Well, one option is just to block it out. Sometimes you can just block it and your opponent is going to get frustrated, he's going to try something else and then you can get the turn. The other option is to practice how to interrupt poke spamming. Perfectly viable, every character has a way to beat stuff like this. Uh, you just have to practice it like any other thing. I'd recommend going into practice mode, pick a character like Gears or you know, any character who has fairly fast down pokes and just try to, just try to, you know, set stuff like this and just kind of see where you can interrupt stuff. As you can see, it's not 100% reliable. However, I'm not worried about it because the damage he deals to me is slow, so low that it's almost inconsequential. Then look out for the throw and as soon as they try going for it, do a nice big counter. Of course, the other completely viable ta tactic, tactic, this will come into later why I mispronounced tactic, is practicing teching. God, that's a mouthful. A tactic on teching. So the game teaches you how to tech. However, it is really, really worth practicing. Uh, luckily for you, teching windows in this game are absolutely massive compared to Injustice 1, I mean Injustice 2 and MK. So, as you can see, that's an escape failed, but you have very lenient timings. Is he not doing it again? Oh, really strange why he waits so long. As you can see, I reacted super late there, uh, and I still got the tech. So, another perfectly viable tactic is practicing reacting to throws. Opponents who are throw happy, uh, really get caught off guard if you start teching a couple of their throws. Now one of the things that people say counter to this is what about the crushing blow that happens if I tech a throw wrongly? Well, here's the thing. A normal throw deals 14%. I think the crushing blow throw deals like 23 if I remember correctly. If you eat one of those in the middle of the match, Unless you are very close to dying, it is not gonna matter in the long run of the entire set. It is much better to tech five throws and eat one crushing blow than not tech those five throws because those five throws, like 
add up to way more damage. You know, you get hit by two throws and you have taken more damage than if you were getting hit by one of those crushing blows. So teching is definitely something that is worth practicing. You're not going to get it 100% of the time, but most opponents tend to be fairly predictable. As in, if you're close to the corner, they're going to try throwing you towards the corner. If they're closer to the corner, they're going to try back throwing you. And if they're completely in the corner, they will try everything to reversal and put you into the corner. So again, get into practice mode. Usually when I get into, I kind of like fire up the game at the start. I always do a couple of combo practices and also uh, tech 10 throws this way and 10 throws the other way before going online. Final thing we have to cover, aside from, well, one kind of bonus tip is how do you get around extremely long range pokes like Garrus is down for. A lot of characters have long range pokes like this. Uh, Scorpion is a perfect example. I think uh, Sub Zero has one. You know, these like really long range disjointed hitbox. Oh, Frost. Frost is a great example. She has one. What do you do against this? Because these can be difficult to counter. Like at max range, almost nothing I do. I think not even, well, maybe down four because Baraka has actually a fairly long range down four. Yeah, but a lot of down fours are not gonna hit. So what do you do? What are, what are your options to counter this? Well, unless you're a character that has a good down four as well, consider your sweep. Sweeps are something that is not really, they're not being used by enough people, I feel like. Uh, completely understandable because both MKX and Injustice 2 had terrible sweeps, they were super slow, super punishable. However, that has all changed. A lot of characters have extremely quick sweeps. Let me just take a look at this one. Uh, 14 frames on startup, but massive range and negative two on block. This is one of the important things. Many of the sweeps in this game are actually safe. So, you know, sure it's negative 12, but with this kind of range, it's going to be difficult to block. I mean, difficult to counter. Wait, did I say, did I say it's negative 12? No, it's neg It's 12 frames on startup. But, you know, you have a lot of range. So, if your opponent is very, very kind of down for heavy, any long range type of poke heavy, consider using your sweep. Alright, let's get into the final tip. How do you beat people who are spamming down twos? A very, very annoying tactic. Uh, people love to do shit like this. Uh, being disrespectful as hell. Especially if you're playing a character who does not have good mids. Uh, your opponent who is very down to happy is gonna get a lot of hits in. Which can be a problem. I mean, this does 14% damage. So, yeah, it's it can be an issue. Well, again, it comes down to practice. One of the things you have to understand is that down four, I mean down twos, are always high. One thing I will do here. Yep, as you can see. I What I basically did is I did a down two with Gears and I immediately sent him to bo block afterwards. If you manage to dock a down two neutral duck it because it's a high it'll go straight through you uh, you have to understand these moves have very long recoveries on miss so if you miss with a down two uh, this is something you can check out in the frame data as well uh, the tr the recovery is 41 frames that is massive 41 frames is huge it's almost a second wait is that correct holy shit that is even longer than I thought yeah that is probably the reason why, if I record my previous situation, uh, even with me whiffing the... Yeah, even with me whiffing the first uh, standing one, I still have enough time to punish him. If I'm really fast, it's even better. 
if your character has a good mid that is even more of a better option because you do a string and you anticipate your opponent is gonna down two just kind of back out and do a mid uh, because it's gonna it's gonna be a way easier punish now of course some people are very random with this and random opponents are always more difficult to fight i had i was fighting someone i think in devora the last time i streamed this great game who was just going absolutely ape shit with the down twos sometimes that's gonna happen there are people who fight in a way that just simply cannot be predicted and when you encounter someone like that you really just have to stay patient and you know you do something like this and you think they're gonna down to because they down to through everything do it and then duck as soon as they whiff their attack you can go in for your combo kind of an added extra extra tip to this is make sure to learn a very damaging punish combo so again i have a couple with baraka stuff like this that does 372 damage 37 percent even the most random kind of down to heavy throw spamming opponent is gonna get scared if they get hit by a 37 percent combo so if you do stuff like that you learn your good punishes you learn something off of a mid a combo off of a mid a combo off of your one one string you are going to be a lot scary because you interrupt a couple of throws and a couple of missed down twos People are going to know they're dealing with someone who knows what they're doing. So overall, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Hopefully it has helped you and kind of gave you some tips on what to practice and what to look out for. Again, it really just comes down to practice, especially the uh, part about how to interrupt people who are very, very poke heavy. So... Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you are interested in any other topic relating to this game, do let me know because uh, I'm always looking for ideas. So if you got something, I'll happily accept it. Again, next video is most likely going to be either on setups or on anti-airing. We'll see which one comes first. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and peace out. Goodbye.